Hiya! Today I'm going to be talking about Sutton Hoo and this one is quite special to me because it's only a few miles away from where I live and being a Suffolk girl born and bred we had to learn all about this at school which is how a lot of us Suffolk lot get to hear about it in the first place uh, but also it's something which is known countrywide and in some respects worldwide because it's the largest most intact excavation of an Anglo-Saxon burial of a king and it's quite incredible. So here I am telling you about Sutton Hoo. Now Sutton Hoo itself, if you were to visit there, which I highly recommend by the way, it's a lovely area anyway and but the, the actual place itself you can see lots of these different mounds which are all different burial mounds. Um, with various things underneath. A lot of them were looted during the Tudor times but there's still so much there and there was still so much there that when they started excavating the place what they unearthed changed the course of our history really here because the stuff that they found hadn't been found in such quantity and quality as what was found here at Sutton Hoo. The place itself belonged at the time of the big find to somebody called Edith Pretty and she was the one who instigated the whole thing being excavated and getting the archaeologists in in the first place but little did she know that when they started digging what they were going to find and it was in 1939 that they really discovered everything. Little bits and pieces have been found you know in different places but nothing on the scale to which was found in that particular year. Now Edith was speaking to one of her friends who was an historian at a Woodbridge flower show of all places and that is how she ended up being in contact with Basil Brown. He is a self-taught or what should I say a self-taught archaeologist who was a contractor for Ipswich Museum and it was him who she enlisted to come along and start digging the marvellous site that is Sutton Hoo. He was self-taught and a born bred Suffolk boy so there's something about that that just makes it so perfect that he was actually on the dig when everything was uncovered. They started discussing the dig in 1937 and then they started digging in 1938 but it wasn't until 1939 that they uncovered all the things that they did and those things have been donated to the British Museum and there's things there which you can go and see now including the most well known piece which is the King's full face helmet and the detail on this helmet is incredible. It, nothing like this has been found before. Uh, luckily when the items were put into the burial site at the time it was the weight of the earth on top of it that crushed it which meant that because it shattered they were able to rebuild it so that they knew exactly what it looked like rather than a slow crushing that would have squidged it all up and changed the form of it so it wouldn't have been able to have been put back together in a way that it was when they were studying it. The wonderful thing about this ship burial is that it left an imprint within the earth even though all the wooden structure of the ship itself has rotten away over time. And this ship would have been taken along a local river and then dragged up to this area where it was laid to rest with the king and all his treasures and that kind of thing. And the fact that there's still this marvellous imprint that was found after it being there for 1,400 years it's quite spectacular really and there's still ongoing excavations there now. Over the years since this main find was found they have continued to keep digging in different places so there's always different stuff turning up 
and all this stuff has been donated to the British Museum so that it can be studied and replicas, replicas can be made and that sort of thing so that future generations can see what was found there. Now luckily the thieves that had been digging around in that area totally missed this particular site so when it was uncovered they found a fantastic 263 items and they included all sorts of things from gold and coins and weapons and different buckles and jewellery and a whole wealth of fantastic things which had laid under the ground for all that time and a find like this had never been found before so this was the equivalent of the treasure of treasures because it was all intact all in one place and of such a vast quantity that archaeologists and historians within Britain they'd never seen anything like it before so the excitement was absolutely huge for this it was the largest ship burial that they had ever found and still to this day nothing's been found quite like it and they found out that it wasn't Vigan, it was Anglo-Saxon so he was one of our own and it's nice to know that I don't know that there's something about it which for Suffolk people and actually even for anybody within this country knowing that he was one of ours and they had got this this idea back then that they had to do this huge ceremonial burial it also means that even back then they were so in tune with their belief system of the afterworld that they thought that this particular king needed to have all this by his side while he was at rest. I won't go into too much detail at the moment about what they found and that kind of thing because it's all over the internet if you care to go and look at it or you can go and visit it at the British Museum because some of it is on display there and also now because there is a film about it then you'll get to see some of the history of what happened within the film and the dig that is um, but depending on when I you get to see this film who knows maybe other things will have been filmed and written about it but it's a lovely place to go to I highly recommend that if you're in the area and you're here in Suffolk then please go and visit it it's got a lovely visitor centre and they've got all interactive things that you can join in with so that it helps you connect with the place itself and another thing about Sutton Hoo is it's got this it's got this atmosphere about it that when you're there you get a feeling of something else I don't know whether it's sort of like you really feel like you're going back in time or there's this mysterious sort of feeling about the place and it really is worth a visit plus there's lovely walks there too so there's a lot to see there's a lot to do but the history itself of that place is something quite magical, monumental and stuff like that doesn't happen very often so the fact that it happened here in Suffolk and it's something I was brought up with and been to visit many times even the British Museum itself I've been to see the the, the relics shall we say the, the um, antiquities that are there it's, it's well worth going to see anyway thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon and bye for now bye